Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to The Narrative. This is Malfunction here from New Zealand, wherever you are. Welcome, and we're, hopefully you're well and you're safe. And today I've got a special guest. It was arranged at around midnight, which is only about 12 hours ago. And it was quite cool because it was quite fast and we were able to do so many different things. And the great thing is today is the first time that um, Judy has been on a podcast, even though she's a fan of it. She tells me. So um, Judy, introduce yourself and tell us who you are, what you do, and you know a bit of your background. Well, thank you, and thanks for having me. Um, I'm Judy Rogers. I'm known as a steampunk artist. I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand, um, originally from Melbourne. So came over here, oh, what, 15, no, 16 years ago now. And um, okay. uh, steampunk's a, a huge part of my lifestyle, basically, Yeah. So um, I'm. This is this is my livelihood. I'm I'm a full time artist. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been like recently. I like. I mean, just within the last week or so, I noticed a lot of uh, you know you're posting a lot of your art that's been sold, which is kind of all yeah. of a sudden it was quite different. Like, is this? Do you think due to the doco that's been going around? Oh, uh, look, I I think. Look, I don't know. It may have helped, but look, I'm fortunate enough to have a really strong overseas um, clientele base, and um, you know, posting things on on Facebook, you know, and I I tend to sort of post teasers, like to just let people see that what I'm working on, just to sort of get you know, and that's why I call it a, a teaser, just so they can right. see something and keep an eye on it, and when I say that it's it's finished i post it's finished um i get messages saying you know how much is it and yeah it's fantastic <laughs> well i mean especially at this time now like i mean everybody's come out of like this um whole two years of lockdown and then we come yeah. into inflation and yeah. to see people still interested in art in this way mm -hmm. you know from all over the world uh, it, it just you know i think uh it's such a good thing how do you feel about that oh look time you know Initially, I was a bit worried about um, COVID. When COVID hit, I was actually mid, I was in a solo exhibit, my first solo exhibition in a gallery, and then COVID, and I was like, oh, my God, you know. Um, lucky it didn't impact too much on, on the sales, but I was worried about coming home and picking up the art online. I was like, no one is going to want to do this, you know, buying. But I had two of my busiest years. Like the first year I sold 63 pieces and the second, like last year I sold 68. Um, and I think that was purely because people couldn't go out and they were desperate yep. to, you know. Uh, yeah, if you're feeling a bit flat and, you, you know, can't go out anywhere and you're not spending money, mm -hmm. so why not why not shop online? And that's what I found. And um people were fine about postage, you know, that they didn't mm. complain about that. It was just a matter of, um, yeah, spending the money, getting the art over and in, and having some normality in their lives, you know, after being in lockdown. Mm. Mm. It's like, it's because, I mean, like what you do is very tactile and, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's like, it's, it's like picking up something, it's quite tactile for those, you know, who aren't aware, it's like picking up something, touching it, you know, yeah. looking at it and seeing where the art of work has gone into putting it all yeah. together, what mm. materials are used and how mm. it's, how it's put together. And I think, uh, especially which, which the art style that you have, you know, I mean, like when I first, the first time I got in, uh, came out, became aware of, uh, steampunk was because of Castle, you know, uh, the TV <laughs> show. And um, Nathan Fallion, I'd known about him as uh, as the captain of the Serenity, the sci fi yeah. show, yeah. you know, a couple of years earlier. And so I was really hooked on that show. And, you know, and through, just found out it was episode, I mean, episode four, season three, where they have a whole, you know, uh, dedication to that, to the whole genre of the sub, sub genre of pop culture with yeah. steampunk yeah. and especially the cosplay you know mm. the Victorian age mm. and um you know sort of like uh jumping kind of not going to electricity but going to steampunk Can you want to tell us yeah. more about that yeah the cool thing about it is that 
you know, with steampunk, there's no there's no rules, and that's the thing. You know, you get you get some real like steampunk people that say, oh, you know, they're quite restricted. But um, look, I I look at it that there there aren't rules, and there is a crossover of you know cyberpunk and diesel punk and whatever you know, yep. and and conventions that I go to and art that I have produced and seen is that mm. crossover, and that's why I love it so much because. I don't like to conform I, I, in in any shape or form, yeah. inside or outside of my art. So, um, yeah. if there's a way that I can express that and just free form, I'm in my happy place. And um, I, I, I think that's why a lot of these shows that you're seeing now have got that steampunk influence because it's it's so tantalisingly free, um, yeah. and yeah. you know it it draws people in of all ages. Mm. I well, I mean, from, from, well, from my, uh, my, uh, my side of things, because, uh, you know, I'm into comic books uh, yeah. and in a big way. So, like, you know, you've got something like um, I was just, like, sitting there beforehand, like, only a couple of minutes, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour ago, going, oh, I have this, I have that, I have that. And, you know, so uh -huh. I've got, like, you know, Lady McKenna, you know, Oh, look how this, cool that is. Series, yeah, amazing. Here with like a yeah. awesome artwork. And um, yeah. this came out like, I don't know, maybe about 2015. No, 2013. It's got okay. the on there. So, you know, yeah. really cool, um, you know, art, art in here. Sorry. Oh, the illustrations way. are phenomenal, you know. And if you know what, it for me, it's the accessories. That's what I absolutely love. Um, yeah. and, and, you, and and I'm huge um, with with that sort of detail in my work. I love all that. I love the the belts, yeah. the corset, all the bits and bobs. You know, that's what makes it so personalised. You know, mm. you you can create your own look and still be part of the theme. It's, do you um, was it like the cosplay side, or was it the jewelry? I'm sorry, the art side that got you and. Yeah. Into vice versa. Oh no, think? definitely. It, what, the, what came first? Definitely the costuming. Definitely that. So, what? How? Okay. How it actually came about? I was, I was um, in a dance troupe, and mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the time when you're actually um, on on stage, you you have to make your own costumes because you know we usually. Yeah. We're usually quite poor. <laughs> we we performers. Oh, yes. and we're poor, so we have to make our own costumes. And yep. I, without actually realizing what I was doing, I was putting a, a steampunk twist on my costumes, having no idea. I didn't even know it was a thing. And yeah, one of the, one of the teachers said to me, "Oh, your your costume looks quite steampunk." And I said to her, "What's what is that?" You know. And she yeah. said, I can't believe, I can't believe you don't know. Looking at what I'm seeing, I can't believe. She said, go home and look it up. And when I Googled it, I was so surprised because I thought all yeah. of this was in my head, you know. <laughs> and yeah. there it was. It was, and I was like, oh my God, this is this is really a thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it took off from there. And I just expanded on that. But I think from a very, very young age, I was always drawn to the Victorian era in films and H.G. And, um, yeah. Wells. I, I loved those yeah. early films, um, you know, The Time Machine and Journey to the Centre of the One Earth. Of my Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I, I would watch them again and again and again. And I loved the, um, you know, how ahead of its time was that, you know? You know the, the 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 packs and everything, and and the clothing and the hats and the gizmos. I loved that, and um, I guess that carried that always stayed with me, and and it carried through with the costuming. And from there, I just took that next step, I guess, to the art. Yeah, I was I was just trying to remember where I put the H.G. Wells uh, the clock <laughs> bound and nineteen hundred books, I uh, eighteen hundred books, oh. whatever. I have somewhere because my dad just yeah. owned it, so I was like, "It's mine." Yeah. Yeah. Mine now. So I, I think that's this, this is the great thing about um, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, the imagination, and yeah. just letting yourself, you know, um, just 
be free with whatever you're getting involved oh, with. That's and, um, it is the freedom. I mean, the other thing I was thinking, like, is like you know, Alan Moore, one of the godfathers of um, you know yeah. comic books, yeah. with his um, with his League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, you know, and you see some of the some of the artwork that you know that you get into that from the Victorian age and stuff. Let me just grab yeah. this one up here. The illustrations are so detailed. Yeah, um, it's like I mean, it's kind of um, hard to pinpoint, but like I mean, if you've seen like if you've seen the movie or if you've seen oh, you know if you read the book, yeah, yeah. it's such a so yeah. um, you know amazing. You, <laughs> yeah. The reason I picked that oh. is because. You see goggles yeah. everywhere now. Like you watch even yeah. um, you know Hollywood movies, they're they're wearing goggles. Yeah. Like it's it's just incorporated in so many things now. How cool is that? Yeah, I Truly. love this. I bought this like maybe about ten years ago or something. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean this is like um, you know like we're talking about like um, his, historic um, sci-fi writers like H.G. Wells and. Um, mm. Gosh, you know, there's so many of them that were. Jules Verne, one of my favourites authors. That's the yeah. one I was trying. I couldn't. Ten thousand yeah. leagues under the sea, right? Oh, yeah, and yeah, just, yeah. And just um, being able to see into in, into the future, yeah. yet we're looking into the past as you know, as artists, as a steampunk artist, you're actually looking into the past and then organising that into, you know, mixing it up with like. Metals like you work like you work with like different types of metals and stuff. What yeah, you do. yeah. What is it yeah. about? Like, how do you get your um your um you know resources to do all this stuff? And yeah. what do you okay. use? Um. Well, I have to say that's my interpretation of steampunk. Is always I tell people it's the past in the future. So what you touched on right. there is is spot on for me. Um. So as far as the resources go. I work with organic materials. So I'm, I'm I'm really big on that. So I don't use any plastics, you know, it, um, nasty sort of top. Yeah. I just I just don't because I I have I um, have a bit of a passion about sustainability and um, recycling. Yeah. So I love wood. I love 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 wood yeah. because um, because it's natural and because it's so. You can change the shape, you know, you can change it into something else. So a yeah. big part of what I do is um, restoring broken things. I love giving new life to things that no one wants. And to me, I'll look at something that's broken, a, a, you know, um, anything, like a broken sculptural turtle or something, and yeah. I look at it and I know this sounds a bit crazy, but... It's like I have a connection with it and I think, oh, I know this sounds bizarre, but I feel that it's sad because it's been discarded and it's broken and I just want to wrap it up and, and give it some love and restore it and while I'm doing that, have a bit of fun with it, you know, and I might put a rocket on it or put some wings or roller skates or a hat or something really, really quirky and um, I don't plan it, it just... It's really, yeah. I, I ab lib it and, um, you know, I'll just keep going until I have a mental, that's it, you've done it, you know, stop. Um, but, you know, I get things from, it's amazing how many people know what I do now and I, I don't really search anymore. The work, the pieces come yeah. to me, you know. I've got neighbours who um, find bits and pieces and uh, the next minute yeah. I've got a box on the back doorstep Um a, a neighbor across the road he's given me so many pieces that i've been able to pull apart and um, you know incorporate yeah. in my work so that's that's what it is now so mm. um what sort of materials are you use i use a lot of metal um and look i don't know yeah my my poor old hands i've had i had a surgery a few years ago <laughs> Because working with the metal, you know, my hands are my tools, basically, and yeah. sometimes yeah. the metals are really beyond what I should pushing my, be pushing myself to to bend. And yeah. but I get quite stubborn, you know. And I think, no, no, you yeah. know, I want to do this, or you know. Um, so yeah, metal, um, and again, because it's a natural resource, um, and I mm. think it just it just goes so well with wood. 
you know it, yeah. it it's something about it and um it's a whole you know it's it's a whole steampunk thing too i guess you can you know it's that industrial it gives it that, that real mechanic right. industrial look you know and um yeah yeah it can make it look um I don't know. Masculine is probably the, not the right word because I tend to sort of want to, um, f uh, you know, put a feminine twist on my pieces. But sure. it yeah. it, um, it gives it a real robust sort of look, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So you, you basically bring like the hardness and yeah. the organicness of uh, metal and wood and then yeah. sort of putting a soft edge on it with by oh, rebuilding pieces together. Definitely a softness. So, yeah. Yeah. So one thing that like I came to mind was when you're talking about like putting things that are broken together. Yeah, you know, like um, because I mean I have a background in ceramics and I still do ceramics culture yeah. stuff. But yeah. like so with with the Japanese they have a thing called Raku, you That's know, right. where yeah. they'll put like gold um metallic um in the cracks a metal yeah. in the cracks to bring out this other form that's like a, lifting the broken piece you know higher yeah. up because yeah. It's, yeah. it's not there is a, it's, it's a not technique worth chucking out called, uh, yeah i can't remember what the technique's called it's a japanese mm -hmm. technique where they bring out the with the gold you know um yeah i i do ceramics as well and i make a lot of my um characters have hats like I make little accessories. I and, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I again, I work with clay because it's organic. Mm. Um, so I have a, I belong to a, um, an, an art little, little formed art group of, with three other girls, and we call ourselves the Clay Club. And um, we do raku firing and all sorts. And and yeah, um, awesome. yeah I, I love working with clay. So and and you're right, I do that. So if something breaks, because you know sometimes it comes out of the kiln, and you think, oh, you know. It yeah. hasn't survived. Um, I don't let that bother me. If something breaks, I I believe it's meant to be. So it it, it just puts it yeah. on a different journey. Yeah, and um, I think well, I need to highlight this. So I'll use gold buff or um, a, a yeah. type of paint to actually draw attention to that. So um, as I said, no rules, no rules. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a great thing. I like when you, especially when you're working in so many different. Um, or, um, gosh, what is it? Mediums. Not different resources, mediums. but mediums. That's it. The, you know, different mediums. There's no sort of mm -hmm. like holding back from what you're doing because that means that you can actually move from one to the other and yeah. bring it all together like you do, yeah. incorporate into the piece that you love. Same mm -hmm. with you when you're on stage, right? You're, you're bringing oh. in this other yeah. piece with your costumes. Yeah, so, uh, definitely. How often do you actually, uh, I mean, apart from your art, with the actual cosplay, you know, how often do you, um, you know, make up new costumes or do you have, like, people wanting costumes made by you? Yeah. You know, et cetera. Um, I, I used to do that, to be to be honest. I was making costumes and um, selling them. I I have put a stop to that because I'm focused mm -hmm. solely on my um, sculpture art, art now. Um, but honestly, I have got so many costumes in my studio still in um big big boxes that mm. i can't part with because you know you, yeah. you my soul's in there like with each stitch yeah. you know yeah. so and um i love any uh, any any time there's a, a dress up i have friends that yeah. come to me you know because i yeah. i can pretty much put anything together with the resources that i have um and i and i love a dress up theme who who doesn't? I guess there are people that don't, you know, but I love yeah. it. Yeah. I think so, I think every, if you if you kind of like have at least once a month or every couple of months yeah. where you can just let your hair down, as they say, and just, you know, put on a costume yeah. and yeah. just be silly and, you know. Yeah. I mean, like locally here, I mean, I'm not sure if they still do it, but I think they should be still doing it. Like I think here in Bangarei at Dickens Inn, they meet every second or once. Oh, that is so week, cool. Yeah, so this is, is when so I first cool. you know, first heard about it was in 2015. No, yeah, 2015 or 14 when they, yeah, that no. they had a group here. And, and if, so it's if an ongoing group. group. You can make your own. I've got girlfriends that we get together for afternoon tea parties and we'll dress yeah. in Mad Hatter, Mad, you know, whatever. We'll just do our own thing. Um, sometimes we'll yeah. go into the village and we might get some funny looks, but who cares, you know. 
yep. if there isn't a, um, a a proposed, you know, get together with cosplayers mm. or steampunkers, um, I, I don't let that hold me back. But you know, I I will go to um, like Thames or those festivals, yep. of course, and um, take half yep. a dozen costumes and do all that, you know. But yeah. I'll just do any opportunity that I can. <laughs> mm. Well, I mean, like, I mean, for for the whole, I mean, the big, huge cosplay sort of a push that's come out of Japan because of manga and anime has actually pushed, like, the Western anime, um, sorry, Western comic book industry further mm. into cosplay. Wow. bigger than it used to be yeah, so yeah. now you like you have like people all dressing up for armageddon all across new zealand mm -hmm. you know and um putting bringing that to the front and let's and you have a chance like you know four days in auckland to be dressed up with a range of friends yeah. and and you know get your photo taken i've got like lots yeah. of photos that i've taken with you know costumed um you know superheroes and such yeah and um yeah. you know in a few years back i didn't even know who was who as an anime person, now I know some of like yeah, uh, yes, yes, percent of more than I used to know before. But I yeah. think the other side of that is that like all these different um the the reason I was talking about like if you make and sell like because there's a lot of there's like uh, like a industry around that now because of Etsy and stuff like that where people are actually able to you know because of three D three D printing and stuff mm -hmm. they're able to actually make it up and then sell it and make you know yeah like you know last especially the last two years there would have been a big boom in that like an art you know because um you've had you know people from all over the world not able to do what they could basically mm -hmm. stuck at home doing a whole lot of art and i think that's been probably a positive thing out of all that is that not yeah. only that you you know you're able to connect with buyers but you mm -hmm. also be able to create to sell things that you yeah. didn't think about yeah yeah and so, then the cool Sorry, go on. Oh, no, I was going to say, how did you find connecting with your buyers in that sense? Um, well, oh, really, I, I really just use social media. I use Facebook, really. And um, my buyers are, and funnily enough, they're not really steampunkers, you know. Um, I find that quite bizarre. I think because a lot of steampunk people are cr quite creative themselves, um, I, I've met so many people that say, oh, yeah, I made this, I made that, you know, and, and um, so, yeah, I I just started um, promoting myself as much as I could on, um, I belong to some art groups and, uh, you know, and the work's quite different. It is. Um, there's a lot of, of, obviously, there is a lot of steampunk work out there, but my work is different to anything that I have seen. And I think mm -hmm. people were quite surprised, pleasantly surprised about that. And, you know, one thing leads to another. And then the next minute, I've got buyers that have collected 10 and 12 pieces, you know. Um, it is so awesome, isn't it? So I love that. I absolutely love that. So social media is my big thing. i expanding uh, my 15 year old son tells me that um you know i have to look outside facebook now because you know yeah. that's just part of it so um he coaches me so um uh, i i'm on youtube now and um, i've started doing tiktok now which is the, the whole new thing i'm told um and instagram yeah. but the majority of my sales definitely come from facebook yeah, and and few like you know galleries, local galleries here in New Zealand, um, but the majority of my sales are the US and Canada. Mm. How, how have you found like connecting with like people who are just seeing, you know, they're right across the ocean, on the other side, you know, and um, and here you are just saying this is what it looks, this is these are the materials I'm using. How did how do you feel about that connection to try to connect with? With those you mean, um, buyers from overseas. Do you mean showing the work or, or you know? Yeah, or like just yeah. talking through them to, you know, because you're promoting yourself. Yeah, oh, artist, definitely, right ahead. definitely. Yeah. And it's about building a rapport. It really is building a rapport. And, um, you know, it, it's not about so much selling. Yeah, look, okay, I like to sell the work. Um, but sure. I also like to know 
about the owner, like the the, the buyer. You know, it, it yeah. because because a creative, you do put your heart and soul into what you create. So it's mm-hmm. like giving away one of my babies. You know, like I, I yeah. It's important that I build a rapport with the buyer so that I know that piece is going to someone who's going to love it, you know, and this is what we talk about. And, you know, I've become really quite good friends with a lot of uh, my buyers now through um, general, general chit chat, even, even if it's not about selling art, we, we do, we, we touch base now on things or they'll, they'll message me randomly and say, Oh, I saw a, I saw this clock and thought of you. And I've even had yeah. buyers from the states send me boxes of um, old costume jewelry. And one lady sent me wow. an, an old clock. Cost her a fortune to send it from America, but she mm-hmm. sent it to yeah. me because she said it means it, it, it's had history with her, and she wanted it to go to someone that could put the pieces to good use. How special, yeah. how special is that, you know? And that's that's about, it's about building that relationship. It's so important. Mm. I think that's, I mean, that's similar to, you know, for myself. I mean, I've got, I'm surrounded by stuff. There's like yeah. so much stuff in this room that I, sometimes I trip over it. <laughs> and as I'm like, to get around, I'm moving place to place. And it's yeah. like, I know I'm, ne- I'm not going to take this with me. There's no way oh, this is ever yeah. going to go with me, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I am building this up for somebody else to own, mm-hmm. and, ho- and my whole thing is to make sure that they learn to appreciate what it is now when I'm around them so that when they own it, they'll mm-hmm. be able to appreciate it even more when they have it in their hands. Because, I mean, I'm enjoying it for now. You know, I'm enjoying my comics for now, but, I mean, there will come an age that, you know, I'm not, I don't like selling my own personal comic collections, but there are art that I'll create that are sellable, like comic books right. and like I about earlier about ceramics. You know, right. so if I'm, if I'm creating my Raikou ceramics or you know, sculptures, they're fine. They, they, they're yeah. just, okay. they're You're okay. happy to let them go. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. people say that, don't so, you? Uh, people often say, oh, how, don't you find it hard to part with something? You know, have you, have you found that? You know, they'll say, and, and for me, it's not, it's not hard because... It is about yeah. that building that um, relationship up. And look, there are some things I haven't let go of. You know, some pieces I think oh, I'll never yeah. sell that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I hear so you. So which which ones do you decide? Like, uh, you know, what do you know that you'll keep and what you won't let go of? I know there's like you know artists will get emotionally tied to their pieces of work, like the first one, or maybe you know that one that really took more effort. Or didn't take that much effort, but had so much, yeah. you know, mm. they came from somewhere. You thought this is the one I want to hold on to, and yeah. those other twenty can go. How yeah. do you? Feel, what do you feel like <laughs> that is? Um, I sometimes when I feel when I finish a piece and there's, you know, it's got that extra wow factor, and there's something mm. about it that you can't explain in words. I'll keep it for a while and I've I have a little um hall table now where I have a few pieces on display so I will live with them for a while and I can enjoy them I see them every time I walk past I give them a bit of a dust I, and I you know I can appreciate them but then sometimes there'll come a point where I I just instinctively know that I'm ready to let that particular piece go because I've enjoyed it for a space of some time you know um and i have done that in the past but there is one particular piece that um i won't sell and that's because i incorporated a uh, a wristwatch from my late father-in-law it was um after he passed away um my husband and brother-in-law allowed me to go into his shed and take whatever i wanted and he was a big tinkerer <laughs> so you know it was for me it was like treasure and I went in there and I took yeah. all this stuff and I was able to uh, make a lamp mm-hmm. out of a um, vintage car he restored vintage cars so I made a lamp from a vintage um, head headlamp you know a car headlight mm-hmm. and I put mm-hmm. the watch in in 
I incorporated the watch. So that's one piece I know I will never, ever let go of. But as far as anything else, you know, I think there's a time, you know, when the, when I have that instinctive release, um, I'll just, I'm, I'm happy to let it go to the right person. <laughs> so, like, have you ever thought, like, okay, this is, you know, you've got, like, about, say, 20 patron buyers, uh who have you know someone who will love your artwork and you sort of think that person will like this one so i'll you know offer that up to that specific person do you do that sometimes or oh yeah just whoever? <laughs> oh yes yes i have a constant um file and I've, i call it potential clients and you know mm. you get to know it's all because as i said i've built that rapport up you get to know what mm. piece will resonate with what buyer so um, I will. I, I have a few loyal um, clients that I just, while I'm creating it, I think, oh, I just know that such and such will love this piece, you know. So when it's finished, I will reach out to that person and say, I always say, no pressure, but here it is. Um, I'm offering it to you first before I put it out there. And um mm -hmm. Most times I will get the, yes, I'll have it, I'll have it, you know, and that's pretty cool. I, I get a real thrill out of that, you know, yeah. I um I spent like, must have been weeks last year um, painting a, a plate from one, one of my characters, this young lady over here, and, um, you know, I did my own version of her like a yep. like a TV version which is like a funko you know this sort of oh how cool this sort is of that type version oh yeah yeah yeah, um, I, yeah I, know so that. I don't actually yeah i don't actually really illustrate uh mm -hmm. figures and stuff so i can do that sort of cute style so i did one on a on a plate for the quarry um great plate uh last year and i i, I spent so much time with it and i spent like specific paints on it and it took you know layering and layering and layering yep. to get the relief on it and mm -hmm. then it went up for auction on trade me you know because it was a fundraiser oh. and i saw it on there and went i don't really want this to sell oh, to anybody okay. yeah 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 so i actually bought it back oh. I, I bought it back and <laughs> um and i'm like yeah i'm gonna I might give it to someone as a present someday, yeah. and I've thought of someone, but you know, I don't want to. I want to keep this one piece because yeah, it it took me weeks. Like it took yes. about two, three, four days for each layer to, of paint to dry properly, so I could layer some more on. Yeah. And you know, you had to glow, glow into dark paint. You had you oh. know the actual resin that you use, acrylic resin that raises the yeah. paint and thickens yes. it up. But yeah. in the end, I was like, nah. One piece has to stay. So, and have, um, you still, have you still got it? Oh, I have to pick it up. It's you know because the lockdown was you know it's been it's like it's in, at the quarry. I mean at the gallery and stuff like that. Right, the right. Storage. So probably this week I'll pick it up this coming week. Oh, but that was I'm, I'm making up a new one. So I'm yeah. actually I uh, I kind of like started doing a year um each year I try to do a plate for them for fundraiser yes. because it's connection okay, to my okay. you know to my community. Yeah. And so. Yeah. You know, it helps. It helps um, raise the profile because of what I bring to it from pop culture side of things. Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, being able to showcase the other side of comic books and that environment. Yes. You know, because yes. I mean, you know, if you look back, I think it was like the, um, gosh, what's his name, the Ken guy. You know, and he um, took uh, um, a Andy Warhol. Uh, yeah. King so you know, he made. Is that who you're talking about? Campbell's tomato soup, yeah. Andy Warhol. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, the can guy, Andy Warhol. So you know, do you remember that piece of um, like uh, a panel of um, from a comic book, from a three dollar, a two dollar comic book hmm. that he repainted into hmm. a larger thing and yeah. sold for millions yeah, on the back yeah. of somebody else's art. Amazing pop so yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like sort of showing that like. Just because it's in a, you know, it's in a printable form yeah. and sold very cheaply. I mean, it's at, at the moment, it's not very cheap, but it's a price of paper and all that rises up. But the older ones are quite expensive. You know, yeah. over time, they they get damaged, oh, yeah. they get lost. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, um, landfill and so on. But I mean, to see sort of like the comics sort of art form come back into the galleries is really awesome, you mm. know. And then how yeah. did you, how did you find like having seen steampunk work in galleries where they're selling all this, you know, expensive work, yeah. and, yeah. you know, those big name people have their work in, and here's you. He's only yeah. been doing it for a few years now, and I'm getting to it, which we'll go on to have a documentary made about them. Okay, yeah. So, look, I I approached, you know, because a lot of galleries, they're funny about steampunk, you know, it, particularly yeah. if they're uh, um, uh, painting, you know, if they've got canvases or they might have some ceramics, you know. Steampunk can yeah. be a little bit... Um, uh, out there <laughs> for some of the for some of the galleries you know so mm -hmm. i you know i literally um you know went to galleries physically with pieces in my hand saying here it yep. is you know and that 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 was really hard to do you know because you get knockbacks and yep. um i just thought no no it's okay it's okay and um I'm very, very grateful that our um, where I live, we have a local community gallery and um, I volunteer there once a week and they embraced my work and it was from there that I had my very first um, exhibition um, because, as, as I said, back then uh, the galleries just weren't, they just wouldn't go anywhere near me. I had no... You know, I had nothing to show that this is who I am. Yeah. This is what I, yeah, they just weren't interested. So, um, it, you know, taking baby steps and that's what it was and being very determined um, and always optimistic, I just thought, no, I'll, I'll start here. And uh, that's that's where it was. I, I put my work in there. But more and more now I do see steampunk art mixed in with canvases and ceramic and glass and you know all of that um it's a little bit more acceptable now and people uh, gallery owners aren't so scared to um you know to, to try it especially in quite quirky areas you know if you go out suburbs yeah. are a little bit more alternative um that's a real tap into that market you know um that's what i found yeah, but you got to try, don't you? It's it's just that's that's what it's about. Yeah. I mean, mm. the other thing I was thinking is like like you know, usually galleries are looking at like what school did you go to, you know, to yeah. learn your art, and do you know how to speak the art terminology? You know, oh, and, look, can you explain to, explain why this works? I was actually talking about that with my um with a friend of mine this week who I went to art school with up here, mm. and I said to him, look, man, I why why his what they do is different to say somebody like uh like a polytech or a university yeah. the, which is the design school and which is the engine mm -hmm. room is that they it's a practical thing it's yes like, yes here's the material yeah here's what we're going to tell you to, what's on the mm -hmm. curriculum mm -hmm. work on the curriculum mm -hmm. and on the assignment and with what you know what yeah. you're thinking in your head you know if you're into uh, if you're into pop culture then bring that into it you know, yes. if you're into, you know, uh, gaming, bring that into it. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. into costume making, bring that into it. You know, like, especially with the banana coming up in October, mm -hmm. I think it's up here. Um, you know, that sort of side. And I said, like, when I was at, um, you know, when I was at, um, even at film school, but when I was at, um, you know, at applied doing my applied arts course, I was like, just let me make my stuff. Yes. Leave yes. me alone. Just let me, I don't want tell to do me what materials I can use. <laughs> Yeah, show me how to do, how it's done, what materials I need to put together. Yeah. I'm not here to write things down about why I make stuff yeah. because then I, my focus is, is confused, you know, mm. to, trying to explain mm. why I do this. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's the great thing about that is like, um, you know, especially if you're into sci-fi and fantasy and stuff like that, you, you're sort of, um, you know, like you were just saying before um, came on, they're like, when you're an artist, you just do stuff and you, yes. it's, you know, yeah. you just take whatever you can yeah. and you make and it doesn't matter what it is, you know, and um, as long as it's something that you, that that's a tool, that tool or the resources you want to use for it. Yeah. How did you find like dealing with, with, you know, did you face anything like, oh, well, you don't have a history of that. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I did. And the, the, the saddest thing for me, and look, I do believe that things happen for a reason, for growth. And um, I can remember very early on, my very, very first time I put my work into one of the biggest um, New Zealand exhibitions here, um, mm -hmm. I put my work out. I only put three pieces in. But I overheard some people talking uh, some about, you know, oh, you know, that, that artist, well, she's not qualified, so, you know. And, I mean, I, I was taken back by that. I thought, oh, my God. I'm not, I don't have a piece of paper. I don't have a degree. You know, I, I'm self-taught. And I can remember coming home and talking to my husband about it and he said, just, you know, don't don't worry about that. You know, and I generally don't care what anybody thinks, but it, it did it did take me back a bit and I had to really analyse that and I thought, you know what, um, not everybody that sings has taken singing lessons. Not everybody that plays a guitar or a piano yep. has has learnt from a teacher. And thinking that way just made me sort of step up and thought, no, no, I'm owning, I'm owning this, and I'm the first one to tell people now, I'm self-taught, yep. and I'm proud of yep. that. Actually, you know, good on you. I praise anyone and credit to them if they've they've studied and, and got their degree. That yeah. is absolutely fantastic. I didn't. Um, and I I just went straight into the practical. Um, like you said, yeah. you know, I didn't have to worry about the whole writing down and, and doing the theory. So, um, yes, I have faced that. And I, I still face that. There are still um, those prejudices, I guess, uh, in, in certain galleries or certain mm -hmm. circles and... Um, I don't care. I just I'm I'm not in those circles. I don't want to be in those circles. Yeah. I'm just I'm just happy to um just free form and do what I do because of the passion and not because of the piece of paper. <laughs> it reminds me of Groucho Marx. Was it like Groucho Gr Gr Marx who said if uh, if a club wants me, they you know, that's other club I want to be in. Is yeah. The one that's, I oh, think that's yeah. the quote, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's like yeah, it's like you just, I think it's the punk attitude. It's like basically, and this is my thing as well, where like, because I grew up like with torn jeans, you know, studs and all that, you know, yeah. colored hair. And, yeah. you know, in the 80s and 90s. And it's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do what you tell me. I'm just going to do what I feel about what I'm doing is working mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. But I think at the moment, it, it's, it's come to where like you got to put the piece of paper and now you got people with two hundred thousand dollars to pay you know pieces of paper that they yeah. can't get any work yeah yeah but they, you know they can't pay it off i mean yeah. i got that way when i did my um when when i um i think i i didn't even finish my um certificate in applied arts because i spent so much time making stuff that i yeah. didn't spend time you know doing the it's, paperwork and then yeah. And then I went and worked, you know, I right. worked. And then right. um, I, I, you know, it was like I felt better working and then I could make what I wanted, painted and gave mm. away paintings and stuff. And then I did stage work and, you know, did silly, you know, lots of different things. And then went to film school because I said, I'm going to make a film. <laughs> that's all I'm going there for. Yeah. And I must. And that's when I actually got a piece of paperwork that, that, that said I actually did that because. I had okay. a real proper aim for that. But yes. I think like when I now I just fall back and go, I can now go draw or, or I yes. can write. Because all I want to do is to tell stories. I don't yes. need a degree to tell stories, even though it helped to learn the structure. Mm -hmm. But I was doing that even before I went there, because I was doing stage yeah. and writing stage yeah. things without yeah. the without the paperwork. Mm. So I think there is that both sides of things. And I think oh, um, it's it's your passion really, isn't it? So how do you mm -hmm. You know, ha having dealt with that, how do you keep up your passion for, you know, coming up with new ideas? And, you know, is it, like you said, you connect with the piece and you say, how do I put it together? Where do you think that comes from in you? I, I think, um, you know, I never knew what it was when you hear, you know how you, you hear that term when writers get writer's block? <laughs> you know, I never knew what that meant until I started creating because I was, you have those moments, hey, where you just think, 
okay, I'm, I've lost my mojo a little bit, you know, and mm-hmm. it, it happens. And I think it's all part of the flow of life. You know, there's ups, there's downs, there's moments where you plateau. And I'm yep. very, very, I'm very good at allowing myself to have downtime. Um, yep. Because yep. I, I don't believe in creating if it's not coming from the heart. And there are times when I have not gone to my studio for weeks. I, I haven't because yep. I I haven't felt the flow. I've got half finished pieces up there that I've stopped working on because I've hit a bit of a block. Like, oh, there's something I want to do with it, but I'm not sure what that is yet. So I will do other things. I'll take myself off to the movies. I will watch TV. I'll, I'll watch. I love watching movies, particularly um old movies like you know inspired yeah. like we were talking about um i don't have a problem with that you know and when when the time is right i will go back to the studio and then i don't want to come out of it so you know then i forget to eat because i'm like oh god i've been here for six hours and oh i have to you know yeah. um so that's part of it it's the up and the down and um but you know accepting that accepting that there are going to be moments when um, you know, it's it's not it's not pouring out. You know, yeah, you've got to be true to that, I think, because if you try and force creativity, I don't believe. Well, I I, I believe it reflects in the work. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of because because I mainly write and design, you know, stuff. I kind of like move from one project to another project. So at yeah. the moment, there's five projects, but they're five different projects. So there's one like a supernatural horror. There is a, there's like a superhero one. And there's another one. I think I was just, I'm doing a mythical, like Ooh, fantasy, nice. you know, uh, yep. world of monsters and stuff. Yeah. And so, you know. Are I've, they all at the same time? So do you do you have all of those going at the same time? Or yeah. Do you I sort of like, just like I'll, I'll do a page and I'll move over just and I'll go, I can't, yeah. I can't come up with anything else here. So I'll go into yeah. the next one. And yeah. then I go, ah, oh, don't everything. So, I didn't, you know, last night, I, like the last two days, I've been designing a logo for the actual book without writing yeah. the book. Yeah. So, you know, like the logo for the title of the, um, you know, like, you know, so you got something like, say, um, where are we? This one here. So you're designing the logo like that, special for a book, Ooh. you know, for a comic book. And then then going online saying, that, that's a, that's sort of the character I'm after. And so yeah. I kind of like, I don't have that sort of um, um, blocks, but I was thinking about ceramics. I've got four big, huge uh, pieces that I haven't touched um, since 2018. Oh, okay. That's about, a bit longer than I you know, usually and, do, but yeah. You know, and so I have, they're carved pieces, uh, 3D carved pieces with hollow inside, but they, I need a specific time for that to happen, you know. Yeah, I can just go and get a block of, yeah, I can just go and get a block of ceramic and you know clay and just start working. But that's, yeah. the thing is that that'll take away from what from the comic book work. Mm. And so because I find it because I'm doing like 10, 20 different things at the same time, <laughs> I don't get blocked. Don't and I think that. but I do kind of feel like the story, like for me, I can write, I'll sometimes be able to write 24 page, pages, boom, and then I'll wow. be stuck. Okay. And then I'll have to get myself to move on to the next side. So I've trained myself to write, jump from one project to another project. Yes. So that yeah. allows me to be fresh. So yeah. Because I'll be sitting there watching a cartoon. This is how I fix myself with blocks. So I'll be watching a cartoon and, a, and a, a, you know, a dialogue will come in my head. Right. So I'll quickly turn off the, you know, pause the cartoon, yeah, and go and do the dialogue, and go, and then I'll find myself writing a whole page, and I'll return and get around watching, okay. because I'm, you know, yeah. my workshop is my, you know, in my home, and yeah. so everything's there in my apartment. But I think having a specific workshop because you work with tools and stuff, and you work mm-hmm. with different materials, whereas I just jump on the computer and I'm done, you yeah. know, and <laughs> or, you know, so how does that work for you, having to actually, you know, having a actual space to work and mm. apart from you know being someone like me who's like tapping on a keyboard yeah it's surprising how hard it is to actually take myself out of 
um, the home and go into my studio, which is in the, in the same home. It's in my attic. So I have to literally pull the ladder down, the, one of those attic-style ladders, um, and physically go up there. Sometimes it's really hard to do. You know, if if I'm not feeling it, I'll um, I'll get um, what's it called task aversion. You know, where I'll, I'll think, oh, I'll just have to do this first or whatever because and I'm not distracted. You know. Yeah, yeah, but I'll make myself get yeah. distracted sometimes. You know, um, yeah. sometimes it can it can be hard, um, but you know, it's it's those times when I will take myself away from it um and often if i'm out i will i'll see something and mm. i'm I, I i'm actually I, I think i'm not creating but i'll see something and think oh that would make a really good ray gun you know or something you know so so even though i'm not physically creating i'm creating in my head you know ideas and inspirations so i guess you never really switch it off Hence us both being awake at twelve thirty this morning, you know. Yeah. I, I sometimes I, and you were obviously the same because we were both awake at the same yeah. time. Well, I, so, I, I mean, I found myself like some days I'm up for forty eight hours, and yeah. like yesterday was was a thing. It's like I slept for about five hours in the afternoon after realizing yeah. that hey, I haven't slept since Tuesday. I know. Because, we you know, have I'm jumping to think that, things. that we can do that. Hey, because we work from home. Yeah. But I, I go through those phases when I'm at the, a real um, creative peak where I've got that many ideas or I have to get up in the night and jump on my yeah. computer and, and start writing my ideas down and, and because I think I can't forget this. This is too good, you know, I, I have to get it down and um, then I get yeah. excited. So doing that, at, you know, two in the morning or whatever, I'm so excited by the concept, thinking, oh, well, that's it now, I'm not going to sleep. And it rolls into yeah. the next day and then, yeah. So um, that part of it's hard, but um, you, when you have that inspiration, that fuels you, you know. So then after that peak, then I will crash and burn for a while, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. particularly if it's yeah. consecutive nights of no sleep. Um, it's funny, isn't yeah. it? But I think that's just the creative how the, how a creative I think, mind works. I think that's something that um I don't want to say non-creative, but people that actually don't have that mental of uh, like the brain work that way. Mm. That, you know, the brain doesn't work that way. Don't understand is that like you you can basically have the very very high 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 creativity and you have a very very low low. I mean, yeah. I've had to like I like I was thinking about this like four o'clock this morning. Like I was um. And I was like, I, I've had to teach myself the to get, don't go that low or take myself out of that low after I've yeah. been through this whole energy burst. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because like yesterday we were doing this fundraiser thing and I was like, oh, this is just so hard. And then like, it was just like, you know, if uh, like say about five years ago even, I would have been so depressed, like seriously depressed because right? I hadn't learned the tricks and I, that, that I've been able to teach me the, myself the last yeah. four years. Yeah. So like the lot five years, I should say, because I hadn't learned how to find what makes me happy. Okay. You know, oh, like people okay. say, I'll oh, find your, find your yeah. happiness and, you know, yeah. and Finding you, you, you don't have to, yep. yeah, you don't have to worry about anything. Once you find your happiness, I was like, I had to find my happiness. And I found that like art and music made me happy. Mm. And so once I found my happy, I don't have to worry about, getting the low, low lows ever, even yeah. though you get the low, you don't get the low, low lows. As oh, not the really low, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, so that's, I know. It, it's part, for me, I, I think it's um, it's cheaper than therapy. That's what I tell people. <laughs> Creating, yeah. you know, it is, um, it's certainly my happy place too. And um, some yeah. people don't have that. So, you know, we're really fortunate that we can find it. Mm -hmm. And keeping a toolbox, so that's how I think of it. Yeah. So, you know, you know now what to draw on to not allow yourself yeah. spiral. Um, and I've got I've got those tools, and um, I I'm very good at, as I said, recognizing them uh, at that that time and um, acting on it. 
for me like it's uh like the other thing i just just thought of was like can, um the kinetic it's yeah. like it's like no it's a visual thing like so like i need to see colorful visual things when i'm down i need to see them like like yeah. i was saying like last night I felt down because there's so much going on so i decided i need Comedy. I need comedy, yeah. cartoon, oh, yeah. comedy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you that know? is so, so the, true. You know. So true. So, and you know, this place, the corporate places um, in Japan, give laughter classes. They do laughter classes yeah. because their their corporates were so strung out. You know, um, it is important to watch comedy. I I turn to comedies and and musicals yeah. and bright costume films and yeah. also dress a certain way um to put that on myself, you know, although yeah. today I'm wearing black. I don't normally wear black. I'm usually in quite bright colors um yeah. and throw my hair up and usually put a flower in or something just to um yeah, a feel so that, that that actually that brightness and that that color becomes part of my being. It, it's yeah. so important. Mm. Yeah, you sort of are trying to draw in like your own happiness around you, I think, and and then you're able to create because you're in a you know it's it's the thing. It's like like you're saying about having a um, a block because you're trying mm. to get to a place where you actually it flows out the energy and the passion you have flows out but then you don't have a block or that the block is not so long you know like if you're you know if you have the low low lows the block can be for months but if you oh, i've heard that you yeah learn, people say yeah, that you, I, like i remember, i think i had a block of maybe about three years because i got oh so depressed goodness. at one point oh so it was like i would write a piece like i'd write a page and that will be it and now I, you know i can just boom 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 but one of the things I was thinking about, like when, you, when we were talking about that, like I remember having a dream where, because I, used to, I taught myself how to lucid dream. So oh, one yes. of them was where, where I was in a place, a st steampunk era, right? And so I, I decided I, I would, like each night I had a dream, I put these, like I wrote down what the dream was. And it was different stages and different, like it would be a future with balloons, that you know, so and just cool. no planes or anything like that. And yeah. then, then you've got like something where you're back in Victorian age with like Jack the Ripper, and you sort yeah. of, you know, there was a story where there's like a somebody had written a story about the time traveling serial killer kind of thing, you know, around the whole, you know, um, um, Jack the Ripper storyline. Do you, um, you know, we're talking about Victorian age and stuff like. Did you, do you watch um, like? Have you seen uh, Peaky Blinders and stuff like that? Like, I think it's just after the steam era or was it close to the steam era uh Pe peaky blinders was around 1920s that uh, roaring 20s so era after, yeah i have watched it um if you can get past the it's quite brutal <laughs> you know but it's it's all about acting you know um yeah. yeah i i i loved all that i loved it you know that's that form of creativity that the genius that goes into creating that dialogue and yeah. how well it's directed. I'll watch anything yeah. if it's acted well and directed well, um, which is why I don't generally like mushy, horrible romance chick flick things because they're terrible, yeah. so badly done. Yeah. So um, and the other great one that we loved was um, Sons of Anarchy. That's, you know, along that same yeah. sort of brilliant i never brilliant. thought i loved that yeah oh, i, I, didn't I never I like you know it's it's so my, my mother had, my mother had seen it like she loved it and it was already over by the time i got into it and i benched yeah. all eight seasons this is when i was yeah. you know then I, when i had then my three years of depression so yeah. this i just benched the entire thing and i think by the time i'd finished that whole thing i i i i, I don't know what it was i felt better because yeah, the story yeah. there was a closure it, it, yeah it was such it was a so good well done. it was a good so, ride you know yeah it was well done you know, but, working I, the punch, I, but like um you would probably and my favorite one of all time was game of thrones which come on you have to love that with all the costumes and the i did food. until oh, cinematography the ending. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It took me a while, actually, because we didn't get into it when everyone else was. Um, 
but it was quite you know it was quite complex that I had to write down you know the different um the different houses and the, what the kingdoms the different kingdoms and because you know it was you didn't get the books. <laughs> I didn't I didn't actually read the books um sorry yeah. to say but they're probably better but when I was watching yeah. it I, I was getting so swept up in the costumes and the cinematography and the sets that I was yeah. losing track of what was happening you know um that they're they're great art forms you know so that's yeah love it love well, it I mean costume I mean they have awards for costumes alone mm, in cinema mm. now so I mean they've had it for years for decades yeah. I should say which kind of yeah. reminds me of like um you know, with, with a workshop and like we were talking about earlier about the steampunk guns and stuff. Yes. You know, with, they sort of like um, did that whole, their own thing, which kind of like came out of there. I think it was Dr. I can't remember exact, uh, something about Dr. Doolittle or Doubt, Doubt It or something like that. And they did a range of the just the guns a few years oh, ago. Really? that had them at, um, I didn't at Armageddon. That. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't think it was mm. like actual, it was from Weta Workshop, but it was a specific person that was creating them. Really? And so that sort of pushed it, pushed um, like the design further up. I, what was I thinking? I was thinking of that, um, those cars, the moving cities, you know, the mobile city or something like that? No, they, the, I don't. Um, yeah, I think one of the great things about us in New Zealand, I think, is that there is a variety of um, talent mm. and creativity and a do-it-yourself that oh. I don't think we see that much, as much as we see here in New Zealand, I think. Yeah. Have you yeah. found that? As, oh, you know, definitely. Because you've been here definitely. since 16 years. And and um, the steampunkers, yeah, they everybody makes their own stuff, costumes and mm. You know, so many um, groups out there of DIY steampunk, you know, huge, huge in New Zealand. Um, uh, yeah, like when, when I was in Melbourne, I, I, was, I, wasn't in, I wasn't into this form of creativity, so I'm not quite sure about that side of it. But um, I think Kiwis generally are quite conservative, in my opinion, compared to the Australians. Yeah. Okay, so I'm from, I'm from Melbourne. But I find that... Um, Put them in a costume, and there's no holding back, you know, because they they can put that mask on, can't they? So they they yeah. they take on a different persona, um, and the Kiwis love it. They just love that whole, and that's why, you know, Omaru. I don't know if yeah. you knew that Omaru is the global capital of um, steampunk. Is that Thames? What, What's that? Is that Thames? It not Thames. Thames. Thames has got a festival, but Omaru is actually the steampunk capital in in the world. Wow. So people, you know, a lot of um, groups overseas aspire to come to um, New Zealand for that reason, and that's pretty amazing. And touching that's on, we were cool. talking before, briefly, yeah, um, fortunate to, enough to meet these filmmakers and, and they, they made this film and we based it around that about Omaru having that draw, you know, that's huge for New Zealand and we should feel very yeah. proud of that, you know, very proud of that. Exactly. Um, yeah. At any given time, I'm told, because I've never been, um, any given time if you go to Omaru, you'll find people dressed in steampunk. Um, how, how amazing. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if I was like the mayor or whoever, you know, runs the place or in charge of the place, I would do everything in my power to make, everybody in the world aware of that i'll be putting it on mm. stamps on postcards that's massive you know, on yeah. commemorative coins you know yeah. everything to just say you know i went to omaru yeah, yes, the, yeah. His, his corner came back you know you could look the whole industry and this is what i think that's a great thing that you know that um that could that should happen in any place that's a, has a bit of an art base is to have you know the council support, the people support, because yeah. it means that tourism dollars come there, and I think that's yeah. a side of that. There's a misunderstanding about what is actual tourism 
in the in the now compared mm-hmm. to what it was before. Yeah. Now people yeah. want to experience things. Before yeah. it was like, yeah, we just pass it. You know, we want to see that yeah. place because yeah. of that mountain or that mm-hmm. you know waterfall. Yeah. But now we want to see who are the people in your neighborhood, kind of mm-hmm. thing. You know, what are they mm-hmm. doing here? What's special about the people here? What are your galleries like? And so if you're like pushing that to the forefront, then you got to, you know, you realize that like, okay, now we can have art tours, but that's just one aspect. Then you've got people who buy those arts. Now you're supporting your community artists, but don't, but while they're talking, they're, they're going out to have a coffee. Now they're going yeah. to have food, right? right? Yeah. All the Support other things. And that's something that I've, I've really yes. thought about over the last few years about how to actually change the way people see pop culture and how they see, you know, cosplay and uh, all these other sort of things that, you know, that is different to how, what tourism is, have mm-hmm. thought to be like food and mm-hmm. beverage, you know, yeah, tourism, yeah. we're going to take you, you know, we're going to take you from this right to that right, take, go go on the boat. Kind of thing. It's, <laughs> that's fine. If you, you know, but that's one aspect of it. Now it's like, what are we going to do next time we go to New Zealand yeah. for holidays? Yeah, it's different Not layers. There's heaps and heaps yeah. of different layers. And, and you know, years ago, I can remember telling people, oh, I do steampunk art, and they'd go, what? Mm. You know, <laughs> what's that? What's that? You know, a lot of people didn't know what it was. Now everyone knows what it is. Everyone knows it. And the, the next thing that they usually say to me is, oh, have you been to Omaru? <laughs> You know, so it's put Omaru on the map for New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, years ago, um, yeah, who knew? I never, I'd never heard of Omaru. You know, so um, yeah, that's been. Huge. I have heard of it, like, but I, I think um, because I always thought it like it was a, it wasn't thing, a teams, right? So, so that's why yeah. I always thought like that, that's teams. where it is. It's always there, and yeah. because of festival. But I think the other mm. thing that, like, I mean, like, when I was looking at this, um, the castle, you know, say, talking about, like, t- 2009, I think it was. Let me just pop this up here. Yeah, so 2009 is when that episode, nope, 2000 and, where are we, season three, 2010 it came out. So you're looking at about, gosh, 12 years ago? Okay, gosh, oh, 20, yeah. yeah. So, so you look at almost like a half a generation, I guess, of people mm. who have watched my, you know, our age yep. group have watched that and watched 10 years of that. Mm. And, you know, I could remember, and I've only seen one whole, you know, those 10 seasons. I haven't gone back to it ever again. But oh, I, could, you know, okay. to you, I remember that episode and I can tell you that was, you know, that episode. I remember that very well. It resonated. And, uh, and you know, and I had to rewatch it just before and to get you know get um, figure if I understood you know it was the same thing. But the the other thing is like that those people who have watched that show at that time got to experience what steampunk was. Yeah, it's a lot like people uh, in the last maybe ten years as well, where the pop culture side and comics came out where people dressed up as costumed heroes yeah. and live that yeah. lifestyle as well so you had the steampunk and then you had the comic book characters at the same time that like you know big bang theory came out so you got to learn about yeah. nerds you know mm-hmm. and you saw what they the nerds were into and mm-hmm. you know it, it, and then you sort of now it's to the forefront so everybody knows what comic books superheroes yeah. are and yeah. so on and the nerds and so, are cool think, now <laughs> which is kind of you know, <laughs> yeah. we're still, it's fun and then it's not fun you know it's like everybody wants to be a nerd now it's like, yeah. Yeah, that's before, it's like you get beaten up before you used to get beaten up for being a nerd yeah that's right um, it's totally changed culturally yeah it has yeah. Mm. which is a good thing because now like you know you kind of like don't get beaten up and but <laughs> now you can't actually enjoy your stuff because everybody thinks they know everything about that's, it yeah well. and and you know, I've I've never liked um, doing or being what it, what the mainstream does, or you yeah. know. So I think, oh God, now that I'm into something, everyone's into it, you know. So yeah, 
Um, but yeah, that's just well, I mean, for like on on our like on our comic book side, buying the comic that you want or trying to fill a list has become a very expensive um you know commitment because whereas before you could buy it for two three dollars now you gotta pay about twenty thirty dollars for it. Oh is you know? okay because wow. now everybody wants that wants that issue to complete yeah. their set. Now you have like a hundred thousand people whereas before you had a hundred people. You know yeah. Want, yeah. so there's a cost to that. So talking about that with the actual you know with with steampunk have you found like with the demand you know for the actual artwork has grown up in that time because of this whole popularity and also about the costume side of things. Do you think uh, you get more more um, people approaching you about getting um, design ideas or where to get resources from or a shop that you've, you know, found things from or a op shop that you found things from and such? Do, do people come to you and go, well, you know, there's a bit more now than before say, five years ago when you got into it? Yeah, oh, people, definitely, people know that and people are aware of it. They see things, particularly you mentioned op shops. I get a lot of my materials from op shops, particularly leather, like I'll get, um, I'll buy old boots or something, you know. The worse yep. condition the boot, the better because it means the leather's worn. Um, and random people will say, oh, did you see that, you know, there's, there's such and such a, a that op shop or that, you know, whatever. I'm like, yeah, you know, but really I don't need any more stuff because I've got too much stuff as it is, you know. Um, yeah, so it's it's definitely, um, yeah, it's, it's changed. The demand, I think, is people have, because people see more of it now and they recognise mm. what it is, um, yeah. It's made it more desirable, I, I guess, for people, you know, um, and the costumes too. You know, I, 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 I say to people now, no, look, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I, I still get asked to do um, yeah. costumes, but it's just, and I can't do it because, you know, I, I, I can't do it if my, if the passion's not there. So I just, you know, so yeah. sorry, there's enough out there also now where. You know, to go somewhere also, else. I was thinking, like, would it take you longer to do that because you got to refine all the uh, all the resources for for it, whereas you already have your you know your passion with your resources for your art is already there, and you already have your workshop. You don't have to go around and find all these things because you already have that, and it kind of feels you know you don't have to go running around doing the treasure hunt thing. I've I've pretty much got. Whether I whether I did costuming now or steampunk art, I've probably got enough <laughs> of, of resources on both sides that I can still, you yeah. know, I, I I can't let go of some. I just can't let go of things. Hey, I've got boxes and boxes of trims and fabrics, and uh, you know that I just think, well, something might an event might come up that I can make a costume. You know, like if I have yeah. if it's for me. Um, and there's an event, you know, I'll, I'll find that passion, you know, to to um, make, you know, get the get the sewing machine out. But um, I, I don't generally. Um, and I've got so much stuff. Honestly, sometimes I can I can barely take a step. I, I just end up working with stuff all around me, and I've got a huge big workbench. And when I'm working and I'm in the flow of it my space becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and then I'm just pushing, <laughs> literally yeah. pushing things away. And I think, oh, I should put that away, I should put that away. But I just have to go with it and, uh, you know, yeah, it's. Um, I think it's something that it's just that creative mind how it works. It's messy. I'm, I'm very, very, very messy yeah. creature but very anally clean and tidy when I'm not in the studio. Yeah. So. It's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking right in front of me. There's comics, there's boxes of toys, there's DVDs, there's yeah. a cabinet of Batman stuff, there's cabinet over here, there's all these, you know, toys over here, there's comics over here, there's toys over there. And it's like my little yeah. corner over there is my bed. <laughs> you know, it's like, cool. But that's, that, you're right. So, you you know, that's the art, artist's mind. It's like, yeah. it seems like because you're eclectic, your, your creativity is flowing all the time and you, and you're like, we were talking about earlier about how, like, 
you know, you, you could get an idea in the middle of the night and, oh. you know, you're jotting it down. And, you, you know, it's not like having a nine to five job where you just basically mm. that's where my brain is on and off. That's it. And then you go home and you go. Yeah. Whereas, like, you, you know, I, I mean, like, I sometimes wake up like five o'clock in the morning after I've only been sleeping for about three hours or two hours. It's like, yeah, I've just had a dream. I, I yes, I need to remember that dream because I could turn it into a story. Yeah. You know, whereas you'll be thinking, I, I, yeah, I think I'll definitely. Think you know, mm. so mm. how often do you, um, how long does it take to finish a piece depending on the size? I'm off. That's one of the most asked questions, isn't it? You know, how, how long does it take you? And, and I answer yeah. it in the same way. It can take me anywhere from, you know, a day or two to a good 12 months. You know, it depends yeah. because if, if I'm working on something, and it's all there and the flow's there and every single piece I put my hand on works. Like if I'm making a, um, a ray gun for an owl, say, um, and yep, I pick that up, yep, that works, that works, no, that doesn't work. Sometimes it almost creates itself mm. and, and that's when the magic happens where it's like what's in my head comes to fruition because I'm, I found that propeller or I, I found that piece of metal that I can put together and it's easy. Other times, not so easy, you know. what's And because I don't draw anything and I don't plan anything, I can't see it. So I'm just relying on not even an image in my head. It's, it's just a concept. Um, so sometimes that concept can get lost or warped um because i haven't found the right piece so um and it's not necessarily to do with size you know a small piece can take me just as long you know until yeah. i get that mental that's it it's done um yeah and and a large piece can be like easy yep i can i can create it really quickly um, because the flow is just pouring out, and I love it when that happens. Yeah, it doesn't always. But. Was, <laughs> one of the things I was thinking like about was like now that like your workers online over the last two years really, you know, because mm -hmm. of the lockdown and stuff, and you've had to go digital quite a lot because of that. Now, how have you run into any art there? Based Any, on your, the look of your work. Uh, oh, you mean people copying? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I, hate, I really hate that. And I, I've had people ask, and I don't give away, you know, why would you as an artist? You can't. That's not like selling your soul, you know. You can't. Yeah. I'm happy to help people to be inspired, but when you get mm. people that ask, how did you do, you know, how did I hold certain things close because I think, well, you know what, yeah. I... I've gone through blood, sweat and tears to work that out. I've made yeah. multiple mistakes. I've had hand surgery. I've done, you yeah. know, and I'm not about to give it away. Like, um, so you do have to yeah. hold your craft quite close. Uh, certain yeah. platforms, which I won't mention, I don't use because I think they're just yeah. a platform for people to copy. Um, yeah. And I just think, no, there's no way I'm putting my work out there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then other people say, "Oh, the moment your work is copied, that's a that's when you should feel flattered." But I don't look at it like that no. at all. And my biggest, this is what I mean about always learning. And I consider every day has the is an opportunity for me to learn something. And I can remember I put my work into um, an exhibition, and uh, I went and visited. Uh, whilst the exhibition was on, and I came across a lamp um, that was made by a jeweller, and the mm. lamp looked so much like my work. I was absolutely yeah. taken back, and I was like, "Oh my god! I actually know. I know. I knew of this person um, yeah. because you know Facebook. You friends, and okay, yes." Obviously, this person's been looking at my work, 
I was so upset and I can remember going into the car park and ringing my husband and telling him how I said oh my god the work's been copied and he said okay what are you going to do how are you going to handle it and I was you know I was too emotional I was really really I felt like yeah. someone had robbed me he said okay it's your opportunity to go a step up and I tell you what I I came back with that situation with creating the most mm -hmm. intricate, complicated lamp that I have not replicated because it was so hard to do. But it yep. made it pushed me. It pushed me to um, not feel defeated. And um, I loved. It. I sold that piece and really didn't want to sell it because it was um, it was so incredible. But that's that's yep. that was my learning. That was my learning. Someone copied it. So what am I going to do? Next time I will, um, you know, make it harder <laughs> for someone to copy. And to be, to be honest, that's why when you look at my work, a lot of it is incredibly detailed. There is the most yeah. intricate little, sometimes on a tiny little area, I, it could take me hours because I'm working with, tiny weeny little uh, watch pieces watch parts that I've pulled apart mm -hmm. and I'm using a toothpick with um, beeswax on the end to pick up the pieces that's that's how tiny yeah. they are and I do that on purpose because it's not only um, I love working in miniature because they um, mentally they, they say that's a, a good space for you to be in to be working on tiny things but I also do it because um, I think, well, yeah, try and copy that. <laughs> it reminds me of like, is it Thailand or is it Singapore where they do like little very, very tiny like carvings, yeah. like Two really sticks. like yeah. yeah, no, not even not even that, like actual like like big pieces of wood, but they're really detailed. You know, like mm -hmm. I've seen like co coffee tables where you just look into it, it's like a whole scenery carving. Amazing, scenery. amazing. And yeah. the the and it's a, it's finding the moments of peace when I'm working in the small little detail. I'm in such a like a Zen mode. It, it's it's like a form of meditation. It's quite yeah. hard yeah. to explain, um, but I have spoken to other artists about it and they get it. Yeah. Um, whereas yeah. when I'm working on something really big, you know, it's like physical and it's big and it's like clunky and it's yep. you know but when it's zeroed into something that's so tiny it takes yep. um such care and being so precise that i feel like sometimes like i have to remember to breathe you know <laughs> <laughs> i fully understand i like um like yeah. i get into this mood like oh like i think yesterday i had a i had like a, a piece of cake and a coffee and just like all like like V drink and water and yeah. that's all I had, mm. and that was it. Like for a twenty four hour period, I was like, I'm so like doing ten thousand things, and then yeah. like I go, you know what? I'll just go and do this logo. Yeah. But I don't know. I want to do the specific style because I'd already done it. Like I had the basic outline. Then I was like. I spent 20 minutes and half an hour on Google trying to find out how to make it look 3D. Oh, okay. Because, this, yeah, because the software I use, which is especially for comics and manga, called right. Clip Studio Paint, it's not like Illustrator or Photoshop, which has it all built in, you know, because oh, and it's okay. very expensive, right? Mm. Whereas this is especially for comics. You can do the mm. lettering, you can do the coloring, you can do the animations yeah. and all that. But, like, so I kept... I watched so many different videos trying to find it, and then I found one. Ah. And it was like you had to do about ten to twenty different layers each, like moving it like a tiny millimeter, you know, yeah, one, two, okay. three, click down to get that little shadow, yeah. so it could be pretty. Yeah. I'll, I'll post it up later because it's like it's I did this cute. whole stages. Yeah, and it's like just getting this right and yeah. and going. Now I am happy with this logo. Yes, you know? yes, I that totally get that. Yeah, I think it's, it's getting that. Yes, I've done it. Feeling, mm. and and then actually learning from another person because because this side of thing is just text. It's not like actually 
you know, um, actually doing art itself, but it's, it's design, which is not like, you know, when you're not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not selling the logo, you know, and like enough because I'm just selling, you know, it's kind of weird because I mean, then, then if I see that logo, which, which just reminded me that someone had actually done that and I'm a lot stolen a logo oh. from an American comic book mm. for a Indian made in Bollywood movie oh. I think it was called no. and it's it's a show that's coming there's a show that's coming out. I'll show you the actual thing. I actually am supposed just... to be doing a um little podcast about it soon. Here it is. I knew I had it out. So this is it here. There's a new TV show that's going to be coming out. It's being made right now called Paper Girls. Paper Girls. Mm. Yeah. So it's a – this one's worth about $400, just that one on its own. Versus wow. So there's okay. about five issues here. So Paper yeah. Girls is about a, a bunch of Paper Girls in the 1980s. Okay. It's, it's, so so it's, it's, a, it's probably been around for maybe about – Five years. It's just come out five years, so it's been like it got picked up as a, I think, I'm not sure if it's HBO or some other TV network um, streaming site. And so you know they, these paper girls on their bike, BMXs in the eighties, and it's all about like uh, sci-fi, time travel, and mm. you know the future them, the past them, and all this. And it's, it's I read the first uh, I think twenty issues. I really loved it, and I thought it was really yeah. cool. Then um, I got the book. Then I was looking up to see if it anybody was, you know, if it had been picked up as a series or movie. And I was like, sure enough, it was. And then underneath it, I see an Indian Bollywood movie. And the logo is exactly oh, no. the same. Oh, the no. Same oh, no. You know, it's just that I think it's just the S is missing, right? Because this is Paper Girl, not Paper Girls. Oh, no. And I'm like, these guys actually took the logo. Well, that's a shame. And, um, I've actually, oh, that just reminded me, I forgot it. I've actually had a logo stolen from oh. New Zealand. Oh. And, uh, and like in 2007, 2006. Oh. And so you spend like, and this is the thing about design, right? Because I'm, I'm mainly a designer. So mm. you kind of like, and I've had local artists who've had their art stolen and put on like a, a Maori artist. Um, oh gosh, I think it's Vincent. I think it's, I think it's Vincent De Paul. Oh, that's and it, and he's his um, a, um, I think it was like a Chinese company uh, had like manufactured the art onto a T-shirt and was selling for like fifty dollars or something. Oh, off. that how infuriating. And this is a person who, that's his art, you know, like I, he used to, we used to live together and stuff and we went to art school together, you know, he was in the marriage department, I was in the craft arts, you know, so like that. And as well, his art is amazing. So, you know, like having some, you know, you spend your time working on something. That's why, oh. you know, I understand fully. That's why I thought like I'm talking about art theft is something that like is more prominent now because yeah. I guess in my one, it was because it was on a T-shirt. It was a logo for my company at the time, and um, and I, you know, someone had come, had seen me wear my hat and go, ah, I, I was on a TV show production, and that was on it. And I'm like, really? So, and here's the thing. Oh, so nice. you just come out of film school, no money, and to, and the first thing you you see is that, and then you go, how do I fight it? That's ten thousand dollars, mate. Oh, oh my god, oh, I just got a chill then. So, oh, that's just yeah. awful. So you just what? hold your tongue. You know, you just hold your tongue and you keep working, you know, or you know, or you make people aware that that's your, you know, this is your work and we're going to be bringing out a superhero with that logo on it, waiting for the day that somebody decides to fight us on it. <laughs> you oh, know, and then go, well, we have the paperwork, we have the design, mm -hmm. we have the clothing, we have all this. I suppose and that's I a copyright. That's, that's been, yeah, but that's expensive. Oh, yeah. That, you know, like who can do that? Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, at the end of the day, you kind of like go, well, it's easier to let them come to you and prove their case. Yeah. And make, or make yeah. them spend all their yeah. money. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I think if yeah. somebody, like, because we live in a, you know, we sort of like everybody wants everything now, they want to have shortcuts to what, 
yeah, mm -hmm. to getting the, the the goods. And so, like, you have someone who sees your work and copies it because they say, oh, it's popular. It will sell. I'll get more money because I'm doing it in my way. I'm adding my mm -hmm. little twist to it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if you can steal something like a logo, you know, yeah. yes, you know, and that's why Nike and Reebok and all them spend millions of dollars protecting their logo because they yes. know it's the yeah. logo that sells the product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I was thinking is like, you know, I'm having like every image you put out of your work, you know, hide something in there. <laughs> that they can't, nobody can see, you know. I did, that, I did. Yeah, you know, I have, I, I like have started. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I do put my um, artist brand. I have it like you know. I just I just sign it, even though it's um, on wood or metal, or whatever. I'll paint it on or whatever. Which we, you know, it can be replicated. Okay, people can copy that too. But um, it's my sort of way of sort of saying, well, it's authentic. You know, I I did it sort of thing. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, you never. That's I don't think that can ever. No, we will never ever be able to stop people copying. Yeah. That's just, unfortunately. So um Well, we saw Warhol do it. You know, we saw yeah, Warhol well, do it way back in the seventies eighties and seventies. You know, right. made millions how many, of um yeah. how many people have um copied his work? You know, that yeah. it's been copied from copy. It's, so um that's just um yeah that that's that happens it happens with everything people you know you get a house built and you just change one thing um because mm. the plans have been stolen you know um yeah yeah so that that's what happens it is it is sad though when it's from a creative because you know they say generally all artists are are poor you know this is this is how we make our living that's why we're poor yeah. yeah, that's kind of like why yeah. we're poor because yeah. everybody's stealing our ideas that we work so hard <laughs> trying to get to. That's like that's yeah. what that's why that artist you know who who came up with that panel that Warhol stole and made into a big huge thing. I know. Still, was still you know wasn't making a living you know kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. it's and oh, talking about that also you know you got like I mean even most recent right your billion dollar uh, comic book movies. And one of the art, uh, one of the guys said, "I created, I created that version of that character. I didn't even make get. Um, I got more by being a walk on oh. on the show than yeah. I did for the rights to that work oh being used God. in the movie. Unbelievable! And it's it's yeah. I think that's why. I, I mean, this is like Disney." Disney who mm. protects their logo from being mm. on a kindergarten wall, right? Yeah. Or characters mm. on a kindergarten wall. Yeah. But they will take they will take your work and claim it as theirs, not give you any sort of um, you know, residues for it. Because mm. like you look at a lot of people, I mean, like in like comics creators are one of the poorest people in the world. Yeah. Unless you've got yourself into a cushy executive's job. Really? You, mm. Or become a owner, you know with a really strong um like contract like with my you know because i work with a lot of different people i have a very stringent um strong contract about what i do and who gets what and why they get it and what mm. they where they're at with it and how much where i stand with it because okay. i i understand myself about ownership because as an artist i know and so i don't want to have other people feel ripped off either Yes. You know, because, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that might take a while to pay that, or mm. you know, to come around to what you want to do. I mean, like I remember going, okay, this is this, and then going, no, they did a bit more work. All oh, right. You know, you know, and oh yeah, okay, now this, and so you kind of like lift up the percentages as you work on it. Yes. Because, yeah. And it's learning. But yeah, and but when you're working for your, you know, as your own artist, mm. creating your own work, how do you feel as a uh, as a sole creator? of your work do you like, um, like especially when you go through selling through like contract with like um yeah you know, putting the contract into it like with galleries and stuff and they take a you know percentage for the sales there yeah, How do you work I, there? Like, do it all? I, I hate uh, that's the that's the question that every artist uh, struggles with it's pricing work you know particularly if a gallery is putting um their taking their commission out of it, it means you have to 
generally up the price, you know. And to be honest, part of it, um, you know, yes, we like to sell the work, but, you know, I, I, I like to make it affordable too, you know, it, because I buy my house is full of other people's artwork. I I buy art as well. Um, yeah. So you know, I, I'm I'm the other side of it as well, and I yeah. I I love it when I can buy a piece um, that I've been able to afford. You know, it's that mm. it's not that it's not ridiculous. You know. Um, yeah. So I look a lot of the time I'm not making a lot of money out of a piece. You know, mm. and um, and sometimes I do. You know, it's it's it, it depends where it's selling, um, and. Uh, you know, galleries attract a buyer, so they've got to be compensated for it. And if it means that yep. um, I'm not making as much, that's fine. It's it's about finding, as I said before, finding the right buyer for the right piece. Yep. Um, and sometimes, you know, you, you get that little bit of feedback from the uh, gallery saying, oh, you know, they'll tell you the story about the person that's bought the a shoe lamp because his mother used to own a shoe shop for many, many years, yep. you know. So that yeah. is worth than the more ma than the monetary side of it, you know. So although I'm paying yeah. commission, um, I'm getting that bit of information which is invaluable. You know that you can't put a price on that. That's that's wonderful. I love that. I love that side of it. Um, but oh my gosh, it's, sometimes I struggle with pricing. It's horrible. <laughs> I hate it. I mean, we talked about how your some small some of your smaller pieces actually mm. may take longer. Mm. how do you price those because I mean, I like, we, you know we don't cut, like when you're an artist like creating artwork you're not working by the hour because no, otherwise you if you do were that, do, you, do you charge for priceless. it would be <laughs> thousands and thousands tens of thousands of dollars and i wouldn't I sell was, it uh, I, was, I was told what my value is at the moment i yeah. was like uh, we we're doing a budget uh two months ago and i was told my value is 55 dollars an hour Oh, okay. And yep. because of all my, you know, the yep. whole everything, knowledge, you know, mm. the whole skills. Mm. And and I was like, how many hours do I put into a week? Like 80? Yeah. yeah. Maybe 100? And I'm like, okay, 52 that? That's like $100,000 a year? $250,000? Yeah, 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 yeah. When was the last time I saw that? <laughs> <laughs> You know, and that's what I mean. So, you know, how yeah. do you, and this yeah. is the side of things that, like, um, um, I guess the, mm -hmm. you know, the other coin, that the other side of the coin, but people don't see that. So how do you, you know, because because you got to source the material. Yes, yeah. Then you got to plan it out. Yeah, yeah. Even, you know, and then work it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard. What do you think is the right price? Because at the end of the day, you know, you don't know if the person who's buying it is a millionaire, mm. right? Mm. Or that person's oh. just got a little, you know, spare yeah. cash. And 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 some so people, piece. um, I've got clients that you know, I think, oh my god, how much will I? Okay, I'll I'll, I'll put this price on it, and they've come back to me. It's all online, of course. Yep, that's fine. I'll take it. And then I think, oh, okay. Did I sell it at the right price? But you think, hang on a minute. Yep, it comes. It comes back to the fact that I've sold it, which is fantastic, um, and the person can afford it. You know. Then I've got other clients that I work out payment plans for. You know, um, and you and you and you feel bad because you think, oh, you know. But and you know, and then on the other hand, I've given work away. I, I've. I have. I, I, I've given pieces. I remember there was a lady who bought one owl from me and um, I'd photographed it with another one. Um, I thought they made a great pair together. And um, as I said, building that rapport, you get talking and she could only afford one. But I didn't tell her. I sent both, you know. It goes beyond sometimes what it's what the monetary value is, you know. So, um Putting a price is is one of the biggest challenges, but I have to say I've got better at it. I got the longer I've been doing it now. I think no, um, I'm not underselling, undervaluing myself, my work. I'm putting this price on it because number one, it's worth that, 
um, and secondly, because, you know, because of what it is and, and the story behind it, um, and I stick to that and, and the, the pieces sell. So obviously I'm, I've got it right, otherwise I wouldn't be selling them, you know. Yep. Um, and you've got to keep it, you've got to keep it mainstream. Once you put a price, particularly if a gallery has got the work, you you have to set a benchmark. You you can't do the wrong thing by the gallery as well. I I yep. know artists that do that, and it's it is so wrong. You know you you can't yep. under undercut other artists and do it's yeah. So um, it's like the unspoken sort of rule, isn't it? There is etiquette yeah, involved. There's, yeah. There's there's um there's like a mutual trust and respect you got to build with Absolutely. whoever you're dealing with. There is. There once is. you, I think once you break that, it is hard to build that up again. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And that's something that, uh, it's, you know, I always like question myself. I have somebody else question. You know, I bounce it off somebody else. I have mm. like I have because of what we do ourselves as a company, uh, who's you know does a lot, also you know is prominent. I get, you know because of our um, convention in the community. I actually have an assistant who I question what I'm doing about okay. decisions I make. Yeah, because like yeah. It's, because there is the other um, there's the other side of as an artist is what people perceive of your work and yeah. what, you know what you're doing, what you're putting up there. And one of the things I, I was thinking about this is like because you have work in different galleries, are they priced the same throughout the galleries, or are they one off pieces? Is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. is, or are they like, you know, do you do multiple? Similar yeah, I, I do series. I do series, and mm. uh, when I do series, I they're obviously priced the same, different galleries. Um, but general, that's the only thing. So I do these. I do these hands that I have got three sizes, and it's this, this, and that. So that's the whole. That's the you know, the black and white of it, I guess. But all yeah. my other works are um, yeah, absolutely. But all the other pieces are so randomly unique in different size, shape, and detail, and um, and they, you know, they can range, you know, anywhere from a hundred to two thousand, or yeah, it depend. It depends. But I do try and keep it, you know, yeah. As I said, because because I've bought art myself, it, yeah. it keeps me grounded. I think it keeps me grounded, yeah. and I think, come on, you know. I, I don't want the piece sitting in my studio. I want it to be in someone's living room where they can enjoy it and it can be a conversation piece, you know. Um, that's what it's about. I have, um, I have a friend who's who did this artwork here, um, mm. a critical here. So he's got this unique style and he's got a – he sold a whole bunch of, you know, the artwork to people. I mean, this lady that is like almost like a patron to him. She bought like four or five at the one oh, point. Oh, I love that. And by, by seeing him within like two year two year differences, and and then the other thing was that he'd been doing it, you know, painting soap for some so many so such a long time, and it's yeah. grown, you know, because painting is kind of like because he does big ones, little ones, and stuff. Mm. And then I look and I go, it could have been twice that amount. Really? But like, yeah, but it's just sitting in the it's just sitting in the shed, me. man. That's you know, it's just sitting in the studio, and yeah. you know, and it's like it's mm. got to go and make me room. As, mm. you know, Mm. It's kind of like that whole, you know, that uh, what is that? A bird, 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 and the hand is worth two in the bush. Yep. Kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah. 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 But, but, uh, um, so you know, we were talking about earlier about letting go of stuff, and now we're talking about pricing. So, how you know when you like, as an artist, you know, you know, you like to buy other people's work, and you, you know, and value their work as well as them value your work. How do you sort of like um, the site that, okay, maybe I'll get, you know, because it, and if it's not a gallery piece, it's not going, you know, it's not part of the show or something. It's a part of that setting. Yeah, it's in the, how do you decide, well, okay, I will at this rate, you know, because it's out of, outside of that thing. Or do you know, go, sorry, this is the way I stick with it because it's what? I'm I'm pretty flexible. I'm flexible, you know. And I can remember there was a piece that 
one of those pieces that I had hanging around because I loved it so much, you know, that I was talking about before. And I thought, oh, I really had to up my numbers in a, in this exhibition. So I thought, oh, I'll put yep. this piece in. Oh, I really, I really don't want to sell it. So maybe I'll just put a ridiculous high price on it and no one yep. will buy it, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And um, so I did thinking, oh, look, no one, you know, not that it wasn't worth that, you know, but I just thought, okay, um, and you know what? It sold. So yeah. there's no rhyme or reason, is there? There is no. Yeah. And that was my, that that was a bit of a like um, that whole watershed moment where I thought, oh, my God, you know, people will pay. <laughs> the amount of money people pay for, for art, if it's something that they fall in love with, yeah. They'll pay it. And obviously, you know, as, as surprised as I was, that person that bought it loved it just as much as me because, yeah. and that's what made it easier to, to let it go because I thought, you know what, if you're willing to pay that much, yeah. you deserve you deserve to have that piece because I know I know it's a heart purchase. Um, yeah, so that, that did happen once. But generally speaking, I... Um, I don't do that. I, I keep it I I, I keep it um, reachable for people. Yeah. Have you had um, have you had other like galleries buy your work from other galleries and then sell it separate? Like again? Yeah. That that has like happened. Price? That that has happened and um, I actually, I was quite inexperienced at the time. That happened in the first year that I was um, creating and obviously I didn't put it, my prices weren't high enough because, you know, it was my first time, you know, and yeah. uh, I can remember the curator saying to me, you haven't priced that high enough. And I was like, yeah. oh, you've got to be joking. Like, you know, I, I'm like, I'm nobody. Nobody's going to be, yeah. you know, I... I and um yeah and, and it was barely on the floor and this uh, a woman bought it and at the time of the exhibition I was actually volunteering so um the person approached me who was on duty saying I'd, I'd like to buy that piece and I said oh oh really I said that that that's my that's my work you know and she said Oh, and we had a lovely discussion about it, and um, she was telling me that she she bought it for her gallery. Um, yeah. yeah, so she was going to put it in in her her gallery, and I was like, "Oh, okay, silly me, I didn't ask all the questions. I didn't. I, I was just so taken back. Um, in a good way, though. I was yeah. quite flattered, you know, um, that she snapped it up so quickly and." So since then, I've upped my prices, you know, um, but still, still keeping it in that nice little package. Yeah. I was wondering, so like, whether it's like now you would be like, I think I'll just listen to the gallery, you know, curator, the owner, yeah. because oh, they, yeah. they have yeah. a smarter idea on the clients that go into that, you know, yeah. that'll be coming. And this is yeah. one of the things that, like myself, like if I like suddenly just put a piece out, people like wouldn't know who the hell I am. But yeah. if if I build my you know profile as such in yeah. this universe nowadays, because of you know what where we're at and uh, in technology and stuff, give you know give me 10, 15 years. Now, yeah. if I put a friggin' piece of art out, it'll be worth more than if I put a work out now. Do yes. you see? You know, do you have that sort of sense, like? Um, say like year one to year six now where you think now that um you know that same piece that you did do now or the fact that the piece you did then is actually has more value now because of your name on it of you know because um, as it's such, you know as it happens yeah i guess you know i was I'm I'm still that same person. Like I, you know, I don't consider because I've been doing it for six years, and I have got this great clientele base um, yeah. now. I don't I don't look at that as like oh well I'm I'm this person now, so therefore I can charge this. You know, it's um, 
that that's a head thing, whereas the work is a heart thing. So I'm ruled by that, always by the emotions, you know. Um, I guess some people do fall into that. It, it would be quite easy for people to fall into that. But I think you've, um, I, I don't let the ego get into it, you know. that yeah. That's just, yeah, it's not ego um, driven. And that if that works for you, that that's fine. I, I won't judge, yeah. but it's certainly not... Um, Oh, no, no, I'm like, that, that's, that was something I thought like yeah. way back, like yeah. 10 years back. And I like, now it's like, doesn't even matter. I'm like, I'm so tired yeah. of working all the time. Yes. You don't, have, you don't yes. even have time to think about that. But I'm yeah. thinking like, you know, because at the moment, because social media is like, okay, you know, people are like, got to make a name for myself kind yeah. of thing. And then yeah. rather than like, it's kind of like, do you actually realize how long artists work on something? And you know, and mm. to do something, and then learn that, uh, learn the skills. Like oh, me, yeah. I don't even draw. I have you other people draw for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, and they they do a better job than I do. I just go, <laughs> this is how I like them to look. Please do yeah. that, and they come back yeah. to me. Go, no, no, That's this will change. Yeah. That looks great. Mm. And I'm like, mm. it's. I, I think the great thing is once again that, you know. Um, Let's talk about technology, right? Because, you know, in the sense that six, year, six years ago to now for yourself. Yes. Being able to source material uh, and, like, look up what something is made of or what something needs to be done, like what stitch to use that was used back then or what parts would work where. Do you search? How much time you spend on searching all this out? You know, for you because you're saying like you're in the middle of the night, you wake up and you start typing up your ideas. Yeah. Do you Google for like looks of parts or something like that? Or have you do you think you've arrived at knowing what you know at the moment? I know what I know, and that's not because I know everything, <laughs> I don't know anything. It's because I don't search, I don't, um, I don't research because. I don't know. It's 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 in here, and I guess um, I guess I'm drawing on um, those early childhood influences in my life, going back to the films, you know, um, and uh, you know, even though it's even though it's there in my head, it's there, it's out there anyway. It's in movies. It's you know these days with the whole steampunk thing. So I don't I don't spend time um, searching and I think that's, you know, I'd rather have put my hands in and keep trying things. And sometimes it doesn't, look, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes because I don't do the research and I don't draw it out and I don't plan it, sometimes... I'll try and do this and I think, why is it not working? It's not doing it. You know, it's not. Um, and that's so frustrating. Um, so that's the downside, you know. Um, and then even then, even then, I don't um I don't go and research. Um I think the worst, how would it be though if 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 I researched and saw something that someone had done? And um, I think it'd probably put me off because and, I'd probably think, yeah. oh, that's like that person's work. You know, um, yeah. that's why I don't use certain platforms to get ideas. And I've got girlfriends that spend so much time on those platforms and I think, oh, my God, look at all your photos on your phone. It's all these other people's work, you know. Doesn't that cloud your – I don't think I could work mm. like that. It just make me think, what? where's my ideas gone? <laughs> You know, yeah, that's I what works for me. There is, there is a downside of that, like you're saying, where you yeah. you um, you get lost in yeah. seeing other people's work, or you get destroyed by seeing other people's work because you think yes. like, yes, it's better. I'm yeah. going to compete with that. Yeah. But you know? then you might and get inspired too. You might get inspired as yeah. well. You know. Um, I guess I'm not not physically looking at Google or using technology, but I might I'll be out somewhere in a a junk shop or an antique shop. I love those places, yeah. and I will I will look at I will get the inspiration through something physical. 
you know. So it's not an image, but it's a, a piece of, you know, it might be a broken piece of um, a metal lamp or something that I think, oh, you know. Yeah. So that's how I get my ideas and inspiration from. Mm. Mm. Let's talk, um, in finishing, let's talk about the, um, the doco and how that came yeah. about because yeah. we've been, I know, I've been, I've been, I've been having so much fun. This is, this is my two thing hours. Talking the whole time. And um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, the doco. So, I, as I mentioned before, I volunteer at a at a, an art gallery, and honestly, I'm so grateful to this community art gallery because it has helped me to grow so much. And I have to say, if any artist who is trying to gain that that confidence and learn, put yourself out there. You know, there's plenty of volunteer, yeah. creative, creative volunteer roles you can do. So that's that's where it started for me. I was um, I, I volunteer there. I have for the past three years, and um, you know I was approached by filmmakers there. And th this this uh, gallery does not only um, have exhibitions; it's a creative uh, source for up and coming um, creatives. They offer um, courses and different and mentors, and there's a recording studio and. There's yeah. It is an amazing space and um, uh, the, the filmmaker who worked there approached me and was interested in my story mm. because there is a side, you know, there, there was a moment in my life when I did hit, and I can't say too much because of the film, but I did hit, sure. you know, there was quite a, um, a you know, a, a, a life-threatening moment that shaped me and put me into a certain um, um, chapter, I guess, and um, that's where I, I got my inspiration and that's what the film is about and it talks about um, my passion for sustainability and preserving the planet and working with organic materials and incorporating that into my bliss, which is my art. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm... I'm very, very honoured to say that it's been picked up by um, Z5 Network, so it's streaming to over nine, 190 countries and mm. has been um, shortlisted for the um, London Film Festival, Melbourne Film Festival, Palm Springs Film Festival um, and is being aired at uh, the Atlanta uh, Role Play Theatre in the US. So it's just gone crazy, which is fantastic. Yeah, um, we all work so, so yeah. hard on this film and, you know, months and months and months and months of work um, of me talking and um, working and filming and so much goes. I tell you what, it's given me a whole appreciation for filmmakers and actors like I I could never be an actress they you, they would say yeah. to me right we just want you to walk along and just look up and oh my god yeah. it's so <laughs> hard it's so hard to act natural when you're told yeah. to do it like and yeah. and the filmmakers cramming into the most tight spots with this equipment yeah. to get that shot I I have an an, an utter respect for the for the craft and what they do um it just opened my eyes so you know fingers crossed that it gets picked up by dock edge in new zealand because it does feature omaru um yeah. and you know and um you know that i think it would be great for new zealand but at the end of the day i'm just happy for the exposure and i'm very very grateful that I was at the right time at the right yeah. place and that's that's my whole belief. I, I'm a great believer in divine timing and it all it all worked. So um yeah. very happy. It's called Steampunk Judy and um, the trailer is on my Facebook page. Um, as far as seeing um, the actual full version of the film, um the moment I'm sort of made aware of any um, any other networks that pick it up, I do post about that. So, um, yeah, if anyone searches my page, now, they'll get the information. 
you also you also have a web a website. It's, it's judyrogers.com, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's my website. Oh, that's, but I, I, I looked I, at it and I was like, Oh, did you? I don't, look. I yeah, I had a quick look and it looks really good. It's oh, I mean, like I did because I was doing a whole bunch of other stuff, but. <laughs> I, I haven't well, actually it's... sold work from my um, website, funnily enough. I'm, um, it's there because I, I know you need a website these days. Yeah. But 99.9% .9 of my work is on from Facebook. It's amazing, you know, and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it from, from wherever the exposure is. But, um, yeah. I, I would recommend that people search me on on Facebook if they want to get a a better idea of the volume of my work. Mm. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is, and finishing, we'll give you like about three minutes to do your piece, and then uh, because you're going to be at lunch convention this year, which very happened very quickly over, in the middle of the night. Uh, so, and uh, as a special guest cosplayer. I haven't even told my team, so oh. I haven't had a chance to tell my team. So, okay. you know, make, making an executive decision, as they say. Yay. So, <laughs> um, so how about, um, you know, something like come in, see me, come to Plunge Pop Culture Convention. I'll be there and I would love to, you know, whatever after that. And on top of that, just your like, a th um, you know, three to five, five minutes, just a your perspective, your your final words. Okay. I'll just put, um, I'll put you on so, solo. Hold on. Okay. I will. Hi, everyone. Um, look, thank you so much for having me. I've, I've just so enjoyed it. I could just talk forever about all this. So um, I'd really love to um, meet people in person. I'm going to be part of Plunge. Yay. I've been invited. And, um, yeah, it did happened very quickly but I'm really really excited about that and I'm going to be working hard on creating a costume so I can get my sewing machine out and um, put something together so that's really really exciting and um, I think you know one of my, my my biggest message is and it's through my art is the importance of recycling and sustainability um, because I'm passionate about preserving this wonderful planet that we live in and, um, you know, just being really, really mindful of the materials that I use in my work and at the same time bringing forward my inner child because I've, I've never grown up. I'm, I'm just a big kid doing what I um, have always loved to do and I'm really grateful for that and, um, and, and mindful that I'm in a situation where I can work as a full-time artist. So um, I'm really grateful. And if anyone wants to, um, yeah, a bit of a plug for the film, Steampunk Judy, just visit my page and I will have updates about um, where it's streaming. And um, that's, you know, that's always changing because, as I said, it's being submitted for um, certain film festivals, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, and, and basically that's it. I just um, would, you know, like to also say that art is more important now than what it's ever been, I think, with what's happening in the world, um, you know. And I I live in a bubble. I was in a bubble before there was one um, because I don't like to impact that negativity to impact. So um, I'm just saying, you know, be be mindful of having beautiful things around you and if that means buying art or going to visit art galleries and appreciating other people's art surround yourself with it and soak it all in because that's what it's about and that's my message so thank you and um i'll say goodbye awesome thank you so much judy and it's been a pleasure meeting you and talking to you for the first time ever. Thank you. And um, it's, I, I just love, you know, meeting other creative people and talking. Yes, same. Because I get, to, I get to experience and remember things that I had forgotten myself. <laughs> and, um, you know, and so thank you so much for your time. And I thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. And, 
yeah, I hope wherever anybody, everybody is, wherever you are watching, thank you for joining us. And I know it's a Friday here for us in Frumaray. It's a Thursday in, in the Northern Hemisphere, and you're probably all yeah. working or busy doing stuff. <laughs> but this will be out tomorrow and over the weekend online, yeah. and we'll be here. And um, so wherever you are, be well, be safe. Um, Kakite ano, and Thank we'll you. see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Julie.